I'm going to press record. Please accept it. So, first of all, thank you to Truist for sponsoring our workshops. We really appreciate it. Second of all, I am a very proud chapter chair for SCORE. There's 11,000 of us certified business mentors nationwide. We only have one wish and desire, and that is to help your business grow. We do a couple of things. We offer the free workshops. We offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring for you. And we also we offer a website that's amazing, like a big onion with score.org. Just unpeel it for all the different layers, everything you need from a business template to all kinds of programs that we have. This program will also be put on the website by our fantastic webmaster, Sheila Slick, who is with us today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce Sheila really quickly. Sheila, talk, talk a few minutes just about being SCORE. You have a client next to you, and then we want to, I'm going to I'm going to introduce Seth Green, and then we're going to jump right into it. So, Sheila, just take a minute or two, please. Well, I joined SCORE about two or three months ago. It has been very rewarding. Um, I've loved meeting uh, other business owners, helping them with their startup plans, um, with their marketing. But I'm sitting here because I think this is such a fascinating and important topic. Uh, so it's a win-win situation. We're here to also learn and collaborate. Um, and Rena's a perfect example uh, of a mentee where, you know, we go back and forth and it's been a win-win for both. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So we need volunteers. We're always looking for subject matter experts like Seth coming in to do a workshop for us, donating, it, donating his treasured time for all of us. We also need, obviously, certified business mentors. And we also need board members. And you do not have to be a mentor to join our board. We're right here in Volusia Flagler. But wherever you are, there's a SCORE office close to you. So thank you so much. So today, our presenter is Seth Green. Seth is a nation's foremost authority on how to grow your business with direct response marketing. He's a co-host of the Sharkpreneur podcast with Shark Takes Kevin Harrington, which was named the number six podcast to listen to by NASDAQ. Seth is a five-time best-selling author and has been interviewed on NBC, CBS, Forbes, CBS Money Watch, and many, many more. He's also a fantastic author. He's, and this is today, Five Proven Marketing Strategies to Attract Customers Like Magic. Thank you all for being here. Take it away, Seth. Thank you so much for having me. It is an honor to be here and be a part of your SCORE event. Let's get started with, as Adrian said, five proven marketing strategies to attract new customers like magic. Now, who am I and why are you listening to me? As Adrian alluded to, I have been on NBC. I have been on CBS. I have been quoted in Forbes and Inc. magazines. Um, we've got to update the number. I've written nine best-selling books now. We added a few more because um, I'm always writing more books. Uh, I've been on the cover of Success Magazine, but it didn't start out that way. I went to Syracuse University a couple decades ago for my undergraduate degree, and I went to Syracuse for musical theater because Syracuse has one of the top three musical theater programs in the country. And my life goal at the age of 18 was to be a Broadway star. Well, you, you kind of see my stage change just a little bit. So the reason why that happened, I kind of owe that all to my dad because near the end of it, my first semester at Syracuse, he called and said, I can't afford it anymore. It's too much money. You have to come home. You have to live at home. You have to get a job and work. You have to do chores around the house. There's no loud music after 9 p.m. and there's no girls over. And I thought my life was over. And I called my mother in tears. And she said, no, 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 don't worry. It's going to be okay. Your father got the tuition bill and he's freaking out, but we'll make it work. And then at the end of my second semester, I got the same phone call. And then at the end of my first semester, sophomore year, I got the same phone call. And I realized he was going to do this to me every single semester. And I decided, while I still continued in pursuit and finished my theatrical studies, I decided to, I would also maybe not go starve in New York as a waiter. Maybe I would become, I didn't have a name for it back then, what is now known as a college financial aid planner and help other families cut the cost of college because it's way too high. So I went to work for a Fortune 500 financial company called AG Edwards that got bought out twice in the subprime crash. So the name doesn't exist anymore. But um, my branch manager, this was before the internet. This was before social media and before email. 
the only ways we had to get business was print advertising, direct mail, and the telephone. And so my branch manager taught us this formula. This is not from the Da Vinci Code. This is if you make 300 cold calls a day before the do not call list was invented, you'll talk to 60 people. 15 of them will allow you to send them something in the mail about your company. Five of them will make appointments with you. Three of them will show up and you're a rookie, so you'll close one. If you make 300 cold calls a day, you'll get one client a day. If you do it long enough without shooting yourself in the head, you will get a career. And the saying in our office was 300 dials a day keeps the branch manager away. And I absolutely hated it. Not the financial planning part. I loved, we saved college, families an average of $19,077 a year on college. I love that part. I hated the cold calling. And if you've ever had to cold call for business, even if you're doing it now, give me a, I, I feel your pain in the chat box. Give me an, I feel your pain in the chat box. Have you ever had to cold prospect and chase other people to get business for your business? All right. So luckily I found something better. I had a uh, fate intervened and I had the good fortune to find legendary marketing guru, Dan Kennedy, who's about a 23 time best-selling author and the highest paid marketing consultant on the planet. And what I learned from Dan got me nominated. I took what he taught me and I took it to a whole nother level. And that got me nominated for the marketer of the year award three years in a row, back to back to back, which no one else has ever done before. So when we dive as we're going to dive into the five steps, I'd like to make this as much of a conversation as possible. So I am going to ethically bribe you to participate in the chat. I will give you a free vacation. So I am going to send, I am going to pay for a three night, four day vacation. Let me show you what you all need because of COVID, right? You all need to get away. Um, so let me show you what that looks like. So I, you have to get yourself there to Orlando or Vegas, but I will pay for your hotel stay. It is a five-star resort. It is absolutely beautiful. I have been there. My staff has been there. This is the balcony in Orlando. This is one of the seven pools in Orlando. Um, that's my kids who aren't coming with you, but I want pictures when you go. So I will give the vacation to the person who participates most in the chat. So if I ask a question, answer it. If you have a question, please ask it. That way, the person who particip participates the most wins the trip. All right, so here's the first. Yes, it's for real. Yes, Christine, I am, I am really giving away the three-night, four-day hotel stay. Um, it's going to cost me, I think it's like five, 600 bucks. It's my bribe to get you to participate. So here's the first question. Let's see if you all want to win a vacation. What business are you in now? Because you're all in different types of businesses. Let me make sure you're all in the right place and that this will work for all of you. What business are you in? Remember, the prize is up for grabs starting now. Sheila is in digital services. Gary is in cleaning. I guess Sheila and Gary are the only ones who want a vacation. All right. Young adult life coach says, Billy. Ah, now they're coming in. There we go. Construction, business consultant, multi-design, discipline, design and marketing communications. Awesome. Okay, so you're in the right place. This will work. So these are the five principles that, of business success that will completely transform your business. I teach these every single day. I share these at our marketing firm, marketdominationllc.com with our clients, and we implement them for our clients to transform and explode their business literally every single day. So number one principle, uh, if you don't have a piece of paper and a pen, I suggest grabbing one. Yes, I know I talk fast. So piece of paper and a pen to take notes. The most important principle that will affect your business, the it will literally determine 50% of the success or failure of your business or of any marketing campaign is the who. Who is your target market? Now, before COVID, I would speak at least two or three times a month at a conference or convention somewhere. Um, you can, my, my wife, the one positive thing my wife says about COVID is it kept me off of planes and home. And she loved, she loves, have, I haven't been on a plane in two years. And she's like, I don't have to worry about parenting all three kids and three pets with you gone for a week at a time. So 
who is your target market? When I would speak at an event like this in person where there'd be 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 entrepreneurs in the audience, 87% of them got this question wrong. And it's okay. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to teach you how to define it a whole lot better. So in the chat box for your business, who is your target market? Christine assists clients in determining their target markets. Awesome. You're going to love this, Christine. You can add this into the, as another arrow in your quiver. And I love that Sheila is chiming in with our notes. Keep in focus. Okay, so who is your target market? So while you're typing that in the chat box, I'm going to give you an example. This was a dentist who came into my office and said, for a consultation, and I said, Doc, who is your ideal patient? And he said, that's easy. I'm a dentist. I can help anyone with teeth. And I said, no, you can't, Doc. Why can't my dent this dentist help anyone with teeth? Why is that too broad? Rena, anyone who wants to lose weight is her target market. Mary, middle-sized business, 50 to 500 that is fast growing. We're going to help you narrow that down. But why isn't anyone with teeth a good target market? Sally says, anyone looking for a business location? So anyone with teeth is too broad. Our dentist isn't going to have the money to reach everybody with teeth. Some of those people aren't going to have any money and they're not going to be able to afford him. It is too large, Stephanie. You're absolutely right. So I said, Doc, this is literally a picture of his office. I said, we did a multi-day intensive. We interviewed his staff. We interviewed patients. We interviewed him. We did a deep dive through his CRM system. And here's what we found in terms of who his ideal target market was. His ideal target market turns out to be a 40 to 55 year old affluent suburban woman who got divorced in the last six months, who is starting to date again, but was terrified of competing against younger women who wanted to do something to improve her appearance, but didn't want plastic surgery. That is a tightly defined target market. And I said, doc, that practice, that 1970s waiting room is not gonna attract that woman. I said, we're closing your business. He said, what are you talking about? You're here to make me more money. I said, we're closing for three months and you're remodeling. Now it took me two months and four meetings with him and his wife to convince him to that he needed to remodel his practice. And we remade his entire practice just to serve divorcing women. And he said, aren't I going to lose other patients? I said, yes, that's the point. Because this is another marketing lesson. We want to repel the wrong people. As much as you want to attract the right people, if you try and be everything to everybody, you'll be nothing to nobody. You have to repel the wrong people. I said, you're not doing root canals anymore. You're not doing hygiene cleaning appointments anymore. You're not doing implants anymore. You are doing the $25,000 divorce smile makeover cash only, no insurance. And he said, nobody's going to pay. That. They're not going to pay that. I said, yes, they will. I said, here's the experience we're going to create. I'm going to pretend that Sheila's just gotten that she's divorced and she wants a $25,000 smile makeover. And Rena's her best friend sitting next to her. A Rolls Royce limousine picks up Sheila and Rena at their houses. See, they already like it. It brings them to the dental office. The dental office doesn't look like 1970s anymore. It looks like a medical spa. Sheila and Rena sit next to each other. I'm getting hearts. Thank you. Sheila and Rena sit next to each other in massage chairs, not dentist chairs. So they're getting a massage. Those massage chairs have custom mani-pedi attachments. They're getting a mani-pedi while being massaged. Now, Sheila's getting her teeth done. Rena's sitting next to her drinking champagne, listening to smelling aromatherapy, listening to music. Sheila gets her teeth done. After her teeth are done, Sheila and Rena go back in the limo. The limo takes them to a salon. Sheila and Rena both get their hair and makeup done. Then it takes them to a stylist who takes them shopping and picks out three new outfits for Sheila. Then the limo takes them to a photography studio where Sheila gets pictures for all the new dating websites with her new hair, new makeup, new teeth, and new clothes. Then the limo takes them home. And he, he has a four month waiting list. He has women call his office and go, I will divorce my husband if I can get this package, which do not do that, by the way. Do you want to see what his office looks like now? Give me a yes in the chat box. 
Yes. All right. I'll show you. They literally now record commercials there for other businesses because it looks like that. Doesn't look like a 1970s dental office, right? Big reveal before, after. So principle number one is who is your target market? And we'll role play a little bit later. The second principle is where does your target is where? Where does your target market hang out? Because we have to be able to affordably target them. We have to be able to reach them, right? Maybe you don't want to spend six and a half million dollars for a 30 second Super Bowl commercial. It would be a giant waste of money. Stephanie says, I want this experience, but I'm still married. <laughs> See, that's exactly the response we get. We know we did it right. Now, here's the funny part. Every other cosmetic dentist in his city is screaming bloody murder. They're all saying, we do smile makeovers. We do cosmetic dentistry. But it doesn't make a darn bit of difference because none of them have made their practice aimed at one type of patient. And none of them, you can get the same dentistry anywhere. They're right. You could get a smile makeover down the street, cheaper probably, but you can't get the experience because nobody's been willing to copy the experience. All right, so principle number two, where do they hang out? So if Christine does target marketing, so Christine, if I my target market is 80-year-old arthritic widows, will I find them on Snapchat? Is that grandma and grandpa, are they on Snapchat? Christine says no, right? They might be there in five years when their grandkids are on Snapchat, but they're not there now. They're on, they just got on Facebook. The only reason, TikTok, they're not on TikTok yet. The only reason my parents are on social media, they don't friend their friends from high school. They don't comment on anything. They just go to watch the pictures my wife posts of our kids. That's it. Now are my kids on Snapchat? Yes, they are. It drives me crazy. Are they on TikTok? Yes, they're now, my, my 14 year old son is not on TikTok. My nine and 12 year old girls are obsessed with TikTok and they've now roped my wife in. But if I'm looking for an 80 year old arthritic widow, she's not on Snapchat. Where could I find her? I can find her and she probably reads Arthritis Today magazine. So if I ran a print ad in Arthritis Today magazine to the subscribers in my city or my state, I might get her. Here's something a lot of entrepreneurs don't know yet. Most magazines will rent you their subscriber list. So if I said, I want to reach the Arthritis Today subscribers um, in Western New York, where I live, I can go rent that information. Privacy is dead. All right. So we got, who is your target market? Where do they hang out? Next one is, what do you do that's different? Because if you say the same thing as everybody else, you will get the same results as everybody else, right? I don't need a Starbucks down the street from another Starbucks. In, in our down my, we, my office's building is on Main Street and literally there is a Starbucks on one corner and then there is a mom and pop coffee shop on the other. We don't need two coffee shops. One of them's going out of business and it's not gonna be Starbucks. So you have to be able to differentiate yourself. You don't necessarily have to physically provide a different service like my dental dentist does, but it has to be perceived as different. So I'll give you an example. Yes, Christine is saying a USP. I call it an MMP, a magical marketing proposition. And an MMP is the answer to a question. And the question is, why should I do business with you as opposed to anybody else who does what you do? And if your answer is correct, your competition disappears like magic and your ideal prospects will raise their hand and say, sign me up. Just like when I gave you the example from my dentist and Stephanie said, I raised her hand and said, I want the experience, but I'm happily married. Right? She's technically the wrong target market because she's not divorced, but I described it so well. She said, I want that. So this is a brochure from Merrill Lynch, another financial services firm. Here's the thing. Everything in there is generic. I could take the Merrill Lynch logo off and put a Morgan Stanley logo on and everything is still true except the phone number and the address. That is not differentiation. So you differentiate yourself 
by appealing to a specific target market. My dentist differentiated himself. Instead of working seven days a week, he works four. He cut his overhead in half and he makes eight times as much money. And he does one or two divorce mile makers a day and that's it. He's home for dinner. So I'll give you an example in financial services. One of the questions that you should ask yourself and that we ask all of our potential clients is, we wanna know what do you love about your business? But more importantly, I wanna know what you hate. What drives you crazy? So because I started as a financial advisor and still own that college financial aid firm, half of our clients are financial advisors. We now have 63 other industries, but half of our clients are in that vertical. And I talked to Nathan, one of our clients, and I said, when he hired us, and I said, what do you hate? And he said, I hate wearing a suit and tie. And I said, then why is every picture of you on your website, on your brochure, and on your business card of you in a suit and tie? And he said, because that's what I'm supposed to do. I said, not if you listen to me, it's not. If you don't like a suit and tie, don't wear one. And then I said, what else do you hate? He's like, I actually hate going to the office. This was before COVID. It's like, I hate a suit and tie. I hate going to the office. Um, and I hate having, I, I won't give you his whole list, but I said, if you could wave a magic wand, what would your business really look like? No limits, just pretend anything is possible. And Sheila says, be authentic, right? And he said, you know what I would do? I love to hunt. I have 40 acres. I love to hunt. And I said, then let's reinvent your business. Let's make it. What would you wear to work? He said, I would wear camo in jeans. I'm like, okay, so let's change all your pictures. So they expect you in camo and jeans. And instead of going into the office, why don't you have your meetings up in a blind on your hunting lodge? Would you want to go hunting every single day with either a client or a new prospect who's interested in learning about you? He goes, oh my God, that'd be amazing. I get paid to hunt. Now, I'm not a hunter. You don't have to be either. Um, I'm opposed to it for quite a few reasons, but that's not the issue. It's this is what he wanted to do. Stephanie hates rude people. Awesome. So don't advertise. Hey, rude people, I can help you. I'm kidding. I know you're not advertising that. I'm kidding. So I need a plane. I love to travel. So what if your appointments were on planes? What if you chartered a private jet and took six or seven prospective clients on a trip to Orlando or Las Vegas. <laughs> and that's your, that's your meeting, right? So we remade all of Nathan's marketing materials. This is what it looks like now, how Republican hunters can overcome the seven deadly investor traps that kill your portfolio's performance. Adrian's applauding. He's in camo and jeans. This sales letter disguised as a report slash brochure gets mailed to, you can buy the list of Republican hunters with money in your city. All he does is hunt now. He doesn't even do client service reviews telling them how their money's doing in his office anymore. It's come out to the blind. I'll bring my laptop up. We'll shoot some deer. We'll drink some whiskey and I'll show you how you're doing. You can, the only limits you've got as to what you want to make your business are in your head. See, we have all these preconceived notions of what we're supposed to do that we've, our industry taught us, right? Or our mentor or our first boss or whoever. But what if the only limit is in your head? What if you said, I'm going to get rid of the whole thing that I have to have an office. I have to wear a suit and tie. Um, I had a real estate agent who said, I hate open houses. I hate driving people around. I hate how long it takes people to find a house and how long it takes them to make decisions. And I hate nights and weekends. I said, well, that's pretty much the entire residential real estate business. And he said, I know, help. And I said, well, first of all, they call residential real estate feel estate. My wife drove, our kids saw our real estate agent so much, they started calling her Aunt Carol. Because my wife looked at, no joke, 53 houses before she picked our house. That's Rena. She's pointing to herself. Had to be perfect. I would have bought the first house. I stopped going after 15 houses. I said, honey, I'm done. Just call me when you want me to buy you something. So I said, Rob, let's not do residential real estate anymore. What if you sold investment property to out-of-state buyers? So there's no open houses. There's no, there, there's no emotion into it. All you have to do is email them an Excel spreadsheet of the cash flow of the property, and they send you a check. He said, oh, my God, you're my hero. So that's what he does now. All right, so we got...
Who is your target market? Where do they hang out? What do you do that's different? Now we get into what Christine was alluding to, which is the why. Your magical marketing proposition. So we got, what do you do that diff that, that's different, right? Our divorce smile makeover, the smile is the same, the experience is different. Now, why should they do business with you? So Christine, other people might say, this is your slogan, this is your tagline. I'm gonna say, let's put that on steroids. Because if your slogan is helping family since 1974, Nobody knows what you do. Nobody cares. If you ever go to any networking events or score meetings and you run across a financial advisor and ask them what they do, they might say, I help people achieve peace of mind. Almost any business could use that. That's the problem. That's what's wrong with it, right? My burglar alarm company helps me achieve peace of mind. The martial arts dojo I went to this morning helps me achieve peace of mind. So does my lawyer. Now, what if instead it was, I help affluent families send their children to elite private colleges at half the cost? What does that tell you? Well, if you're poor, you're disqualified, right? I help affluent families. Number two, it says elite private colleges. So if my kids are going to community college, I'm not a good fit. And I'm cutting the cost in half. So if you've got kids headed to Stanford, Yale, Harvard, Penn, Ivy League schools, and you want to cut your cost, you raise your hand and say, tell me more. How do you do that? Our example for Nathan, he used to say, I'm a financial advisor, and that was it. I help families save for retirement. Um, we changed it to, I help conservative sportsmen protect their nest egg from Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and Joe Biden. Now, if you're a Democrat, you hate him, right? You might want to punch him out. You might want to say, you're evil. But if you're a Republican and you hunt, you go, oh my God, tell me more. You might be happy with your financial advisor. You might think you're doing good. But when he says that, you go, oh my God, she's gonna, they're going to take my guns away. They're going to decimate healthcare, wreck the stock market, vaccinate everybody. How do you help me? Take my money. That's how you know your magical marketing proposition works. The right response when someone says what you do and you give them your MMP, they should, if they're the wrong target market, they should either stop talking or run away. If they're in your target market, they should say, tell me more. How do you do that? Sign me up. Now, if Nathan somehow got brainwashed into going to a Sierra Club environmental meeting, he would not answer that. He would not give that answer. He'd get beat up, right? Because they're all environmental donors who would hate him for hunting. But if he goes to a hunting lodge or a gun club, and he gives that answer, he has a crowd, like five or 10 people around him in five minutes who are like, what do you do? Tell me more about that. All right, so we need the last piece. The last piece, we did who, what, where, and why. We need the how. How are you gonna communicate to your target market, where they hang out, what you do that's different, and why they should hire you, as opposed to your competition, and doing nothing. A lot of business owners don't realize doing nothing is your competition because you have to disturb someone enough to get them to change what they're doing. Because if you think about it, a lot of Americans are complacent. We think we're okay or we're okay not being okay, right? Otherwise, 83% of us wouldn't be obese or overweight or whatever it is, right? It isn't that you're not aware that you're 200, 600 pounds, right? There's whole television shows, my 600 pound life. She knows she's 600 pounds. It's not news to her, but she's okay with it. Or she's not disturbed enough to change. Maybe when she has a heart attack, then she changes. So we've got to disturb them out of doing nothing. We've got to disturb them out of their current relationship with their current provider. Because if you are, I'm flipping through what people said they did, 17 to 25 year olds needing help with transitioning toward independent living for Billy Boone. Oh, I know some people who could tend to be sent your way, right? They're all stuck on their parents in the basement on the couch. The world's scary out there. I don't want to go out there, right? So if 
he's got to disturb the parent. I'm assuming the parents probably hire you to say, get this kid off my couch. But for Billy, either the parent has to be disturbed enough to write a check to say, help me get this kid to launch out of my house, or the kid's got to feel bad enough that they're willing to put up some money to learn something to get off the couch. All right, so how we communicate all that is a marketing system. Looks something like this. Don't worry, you don't have to start with 133 steps. You'll get overwhelmed. I didn't start with 133 steps either. I started with one, because none of this existed 20, 30 years ago. So rather than getting shiny object syndrome, and going, I don't know if I should be on Snapchat this week, TikTok next week, Clubhouse last week. I don't, I, I, there's too much going on. Pick one. Pick one target market. One form of media to reach them and make one offer. Get really, really good at that before you branch out. Because if you try and do 133 things at once, you get analysis paralysis, you'll get overwhelmed, and you won't get anything done well. Uh, let's see. I want an alternative to social media, says Stephanie. Direct mail. Um, it doesn't have to be a newsletter, though. It just has to be direct mail. Newsletters are a lot of work. Yes, but so is social media. I love the fighting back and forth. Um, this, you guys are great. So newsletters don't have to be a lot of work, by the way, but that's a whole separate conversation. Okay, so I'm gonna we're going to do a role play in a minute. So think about if you want to volunteer and we'll reinvent your business on the spot. I'm going to share with you some examples of happy clients. Don't worry. I have nothing to pitch you. There's nothing for sale today. So I know you got your credit cards out. Put them away. You can't give me any money today. Different perspectives, not fighting over here. I didn't mean fighting fight. I, I know you're not fighting. <laughs> now, now she was boxing. Awesome. All right. So while you think about if you want to volunteer, doesn't cost anything. Let me share with you a couple case studies of how this process can work. And then we'll do a role play and reinvent somebody together on the spot. I just hope everybody sees like why, why we've been excited about this. Like, and like this, this is just like fast tracked us into, we're like way further ahead than we've ever been in, in entering into a new, new industry. And you don't have to do it just to enter into a new industry, right? You can do it to elevate yourself in your current industry, but um, it's, it's like jumping to the front of the line. It's, it's kind of, I mean, there's no way we could pull this off by ourselves. To do. Lined up. We were trying to go down that route of trying to build that influence and you showed up and it was, anyway, I'm just super excited. This is one of the most exciting things that we're doing on our marketing side right now. I just All right. This is Paul. Hey, this is Paul Partridge from uh, HaydenRock.com. Just wanted to uh, take two minutes to say uh, what our experience has been on the uh, podcast. We have one called the Accounting Success Podcast and um, we've had a number of really great guests people seem to be thrilled to uh, just to be asked to be on it. So that part is great. It's been great for uh, us getting our word out. But kind of on the results side, our book is about a month from being published. And before it's even published, we already have uh, clients that are signing up uh, from the podcast. So in terms of return on investment, we'll already have fees in excess of anything we paid certainly to Seth and uh, his team before the book even gets published. So we're way ahead of the game. We feel like we're only in the second or third inning. And so by the time we get to uh, inning number nine, it's going to be even better. But um, the, it's off to a great start and we couldn't be happier. All right, one more and then we'll do a role play. This is Alex Mendozian. He founded MarketingOnline.com. He is known as the Warren Buffett of the internet because he's made over $400 million online. Hey, it's Alex Mondosian from MarketingOnline.com. We are at a big event here with internet marketers, and it's tough to meet people in the crowd, and people usually don't stick out, except for one person that I'm going to endorse right here and right now. Seth Green knows his stuff, not only as a fellow podcaster and having a web TV show and knowing how to deliver content, but he knows how to do it for you. He's done it for me, he's done it for others, and I trust him with my clients, customers, and members. And I'm not gonna let him talk because this is my show for him, but if you wanna get taken out of the crowd and be seen and be heard, don't be a best kept secret. I know I'm pontificating, but I'm telling you, hire this guy because he knows what he's doing and he's got the right team. Alex Mondosian, 
higher set. All right. So let's take a look. Who wants to? Oh, I volunteer. Okay. So Mary volunteered. Awesome. All right. Um, Mary, do you want to do this in the chat or can we bring you on? I am going to allow you to talk, Mary, if you'll unmute yourself. Mary, can you unmute yourself? Wait. Oh, you were unmuted. One more time. Unmute. There okay. you go. Awesome. Yes. All right. So, Mary, thank you for volunteering. Tell everybody what business are you in? So I have a um, management consulting firm. I work specifically with um, small, well, medium-sized businesses that are fast growing. And I help them with their infrastructure to keep up with their growth. So I work a lot with the people side of things and the system side of things. Okay, so who, is there a specific industry you get better results in? I, over the 20 years I've had my business, I have gone across every industry. Okay, so for the purposes of this exercise, give me, because it's going to be a lot harder to make you the queen of what you do <laughs> to every business than right. if you said, I want to be the queen of doing this for mom and pop restaurants with seven locations each. So it's, it's more, and we can just pick any industry, you can pick healthcare or, or any of the industry, but it's more about the mindset of the people, they want to grow fast um, and eventually they'll probably sell. So it's more of a growing fast and selling concept. Okay, so this is why they, I get to have fun because I get to ask the hard questions. So <laughs> the issue is I'm thinking, you're thinking like a doer of what you do. Yeah, and I'm thinking like a marketer. And as a marketer, I can't go buy a list of business CEOs with the right mindset, right? I, there's no target predefined for you. So I need some demographic or psychographic criteria that I could identify enough to build or buy a list of your target market we could affordably reach. So mm -hmm. I had a company yesterday that has like the only OSHA and HIPAA compliant system for dealing with the vaccine mandates if you have 100 to 10,000 employees. And their ideal center of influence, the CEO doesn't hire them. The general counsel, the lawyer does. The lawyer brings them in. And they said, we don't know how to reach the lawyers at these big companies. And I said, well, they happen to all belong to the General Counsel Association that has an email list of 45,000 I can pay to send an email to. They were like, oh my God, we didn't know that was possible. Sign us up. So who's, I got to narrow down who your ideal client is in order to build a target market you can affordably reach for this hypothetical exercise. So when I've been thinking about doing this, I was thinking about the organizations that target private equity, that target venture capitalists, because they're oh. the ones that need the funding for fast growth. Okay, so does that help? It, it does, it does. You're doing, you're get, we're getting there. So does that mean you say organizations that target private equity? So do you want to talk to limit the, the general partner of a private equity firm who could bring you into their 37 companies in their portfolio? I don't understand. <laughs> okay, so you use the word private equity. Yeah, private equity, venture capital. It's basically the, the people I would target would probably need those kind of organizations in order to grow. Okay, so it's a business that is a likely candidate to be acquired by a private equity company. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so I could go one level up. And instead of saying, I still can't identify, I suppose if you got like business first or whatever the publication is in your city that ranks all everybody in your area, they might have, like we can buy what's called the book of lists and yeah. it will list the companies ranked in order by bits, employees or sales or whatever. And you can buy the database. Mm -hmm. So that might work for you if you took the biggest privately held companies in your area because mm -hmm. Kaleida Health or whoever isn't going to sell, you need a privately held company. That might be a good way to target the companies. 
Most of my clients would fit into that category. Perfect. Okay. So that step one, and let's say there's a hundred businesses on that list. I'm making it up and we get the contact information and we go after the CEO. Mm -hmm. Um, what I, I'm pretend that's me. I am the CEO of a company that would be acquired. We actually were looking at a potential acquisition. So what is your pitch to me when I meet you on the elevator at a, at a networking, at a score event and say, what do you do? What's your answer? I have none. Okay. So I, we're missing I, I the magical marketing proposition. Well. Yeah. I do not do that. Well, I, I, I'm terrible at that. Okay. So <laughs> let's rephrase that. <laughs> and instead of saying I'm terrible at that, say I haven't perfected it yet. I haven't perfected it. I'm not even close. Yes. <laughs> because yet implies that it's coming, right? It it's positive. To. Yes. Okay. So then let's do this. Let's spend the, uh, cause I know there are other people who want to volunteer too, but I want to leave you with some value besides figuring out how to go after your target market. Let's work on your magical marketing proposition for just a minute or elevator pitch. Um, mm -hmm. cause it'll benefit everybody. So you don't have it yet. So give me the terrible version. Now, what do you do? Mary go. So I would probably not oh, unlike. No, no, no. Actually talk to me, be oh. in character. Oh, you can do it. Mary, I have a million dollar check right here. I'll give it to you. Um, but I need to know what I'm giving it to you for. So I'm going to be able to help you continue to grow your business so you can sell it um, and making sure that you have the right people in the right seat and your infrastructure supports your growth. Okay, so that's a start. That's I can do. That's not bad. <laughs> Thank you for the virtual applause, right? Thank you guys. <laughs> yeah, Sheila and Raina are on it. Um, no, that wasn't bad. That wasn't terrible. You, you had me prepared when you said terrible. Okay. So you exceeded the terrible expectation. So <laughs> I would suggest, yeah. let's rephrase some of that. Okay. So continue to grow. I'm growing anyway. Right. Um, it, that's my assumption. I'm growing anyway. Why do I need you to continue to do what I've already done? I need you to take me to the next level. Mm -hmm. So do you have a company size that is an ideal sweet spot for you in terms of revenue? Revenue less I'm... so than employee size. Okay. Get, what's the answer? Then employee size. How many? Between 50 and 500 employees. It's a big difference, but I'll play with you for a minute. But what if it was, what do you do, Mary? I help the CEOs of, CEOs of companies who have 50 to 500 employees blank so that they can get acquired by private equity and get private equity companies and go to the next level. Mm -hmm. So what's the blank? I help CEOs of companies with 50 to 500 employees do what so that they will get bought by private equity? Are you helping them pitch their business to private equity investors? No. No, 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 no. I am making sure that they are running, that their employees are productive and that their systems are supporting their growth. The biggest issue that I come across is that my clients, they, they outgrow their infrastructure. They outgrow their people. And what I help them do is I help them get back on track. Awesome. Make sure the right people is in the right seat and the on the bus. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Now you're getting there. Okay. So maybe it's, it's not gonna be perfect today, but if it's something like I help the C CEOs of companies who have 50 to 500 employees get to the next level, revamp, we'll need to better, we'll work on it, but revamp their systems operations and for systems and operations and people so that they can get acquired by private equity and get to companies and get to the next level, something like that. Mm-hmm. I think okay. you do one more round of tweaking and you got something that would make me raise my hand. Okay. So thank you for playing, Mary. Thank you. You are welcome. <laughs> There's it. hope. There's hope. <laughs> All right. Uh, Stephanie, we're going to do a shorter version for you. We're going to do it in under six minutes, but you're up. Did I unmute successfully? Yes. You did. Okay. Okay. So my business is much different from that. And it's actually, I am a solo entrepreneur right now. And I launched September 10th. And um, so my name is Stephanie Mason Teague. 
and I have recently become an empty nester and realized that I wasn't adjusting very well to that new title and have started writing a weekly column that I would love for you to subscribe to. It's called The Empty Mess and it arrives directly to your inbox on Saturday mornings. And also I provide great um, recommendations for products that I also list in my weekly articles. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Okay. So I'm signing up for your email list and then in your email articles, which is awesome, educational, entertaining content. I'm also going to get recommendations for products and services that you are hopefully an affiliate of, and you're going to get a commission if I buy. Yes. So I need to tighten that up. I realized I didn't have time to practice. That's okay. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I'm good. I have a tagline and uh, my tagline is it's our time to shine. And I've actually developed an all natural anti-aging facial and body lotion that I have at the manufacturer right now called shine. Okay. So that's a whole different business. So yes. awesome. So my wife also has a business model similar to yours in that um, she is a blogger, a vlogger and a podcaster and an author. She is in, she has one of the top 100 mommy blogs. Um, thanks in a little small part to our efforts and yeah. <laughs> cause she gets free marketing. And so she now gets ad revenue, affiliate commissions, all that good stuff. So it's, this is a layup for me and I did not plan this because I've already done this business model. So <laughs> There's the, you're going after the empty nesters. Yes. Um, and, so and I would say it's probably, uh, even though my husband dutifully reads my, my, uh, my content. articles every week, I would say it's mostly women because it is funny stories about being married for 25 years yeah. and, you know, looking at him and going, Oh, okay, well, you're still here. Um, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, I do make a weekly video. That's kind of a teaser to toss to get new subscribers to subscribe to my weekly articles. So I am doing that, but it's um, I'm struggling with getting them to pay rather than just subscribe for free. And then also I haven't been able to tie in my online store yet because I don't understand how, the, how I can sell other people's stuff as well as my own on my store. Okay, so I do this every day. Okay. So you're gonna, I'll put my email in the chat because um, awesome. we don't have enough time, but I'm gonna teach you a tool that will okay. be useful for everybody. Uh -huh. So this tool is a website called Feedspot. Feedspot will allow you to find the top 100 blogs, podcasts, whatever on any topic. So let's say I wanted to, I don't know if empty nesters is gonna be a topic that that they've got, but I can find out. Um, do I want to go to recommended blogs? Oh, look at this. Empty nest. Okay. So you can use this. It's free. I think the paid version where you export out the contact information for all these people is like 10 bucks a month. It's something ridiculous. But we use this for research because I will go find the top blogs, top podcasts, top whatever in every space, and then start interviewing those people. Okay. Because then they'll tell all their followers and drive them to me. That's okay. how my wife built her podcast um, by interviewing the top 100 mommy podcasters. And now they show up to her lives every week. They email their audiences for her because they're friends now. And it's helped her get to like 3.7 million video views. Wow. Okay. So, well, I'll put my email in the chat because we'll have a longer conversation about how the business model actually works. I would love Everybody, that. Thank you. Use Feedspot. It's ridiculously easy. You will go down the rabbit hole. It can be addicting in terms of research. All right, everybody give Stephanie a virtual hand. Thank All you. right, I am running out of time. So we're going to wrap up. I'm going to leave you with a little bit. We're going to have uh, Kevin from Shark Tank say something super quick, and then we'll wrap up and award our vacation. Hi, I'm Kevin Harrington, inventor of the infomercial and original shark on the hit TV show Shark Tank. I'm here to talk about my weekly podcast, Sharkpreneur. 
I really love doing my weekly podcast and Seth Green and his team do an amazing job. Uh, they actually do almost all the work, okay? I just show up, hang out, get to meet amazing people every single week and I just wanna say you should tune in to Sharkpreneur and you know, I love going there because I never know who's going to be there on a week to week basis. So thanks for being there today. All right. So um, we've got to give away a vacation and then tell you how you can get more information from us. So um, we've got, I've been going through the chat as we've been going along. I think we honestly have a tie. Um, I've got it. Sheila, you also volunteer for score, right? You're probably not allowed to win. She's not allowed to win. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So then in that case, to me. <laughs> and you'll take her with you, right? Uh, so in that case, I've got a three-way tie between Stephanie, Christine, and Mary. Um, I will put my email in the chat box. I will. Market. You were all. I didn't expect everybody to participate at such an awesome level. You did better than our normal group, our, our normal crowds do. So I greatly appreciate that. So Stephanie, Christine, and Mary, I'm just going to have to deal. I'm just going to have to send you all to Orlando or Vegas. So shoot me an email and say I want to go to Orlando or I want to go to Vegas, and I will get you your details. Um, you don't have to travel now. You have to register. You have to call the company and register the vacation. You have to pay like the thirty dollars in taxes or whatever it is. Um, and then you have 18 months to go. So if you're not traveling now because of COVID or something, you don't have to go now. It, it won't expire for a year and a half. Um, the other thing I would, the other offer I was asked to make is um, we offer a fix my marketing consultation where we jump on a call, we talk for half an hour um, about your business, then we jump on a second call and we come back with a marketing plan as to what you should do, what medias you should be using, how you should be marketing and it, what, in what order you should do it because you're not going to do it all at once. Um, we normally charge $497 for that. Adrian twisted my arm and said, can we get it for free? So, and there's no sales pitch on that, by the way. It's not a sales pitch in disguise. So for, we don't normally do that. Normally you have to pay for it. Um, so if you shoot me an email and say score um, in a subject line, we will hook you up with one of those. It's going to, the only issue is going to be timing in terms of, because obviously we run into Thanksgiving next week. Um, so it, it's most likely going to take, they're most likely going to get scheduled in December. Um, but because you showed up live, if you want one of those, give Adrian a big, well, it's COVID, so don't give her a big hug. Give her a big virtual round of applause. <laughs> Um, for twisting my arm and saying some of these people are starting newer businesses. They might not have the 500 bucks. Can we help them get to the point where they have all this money? And I'm a nice person, at least according to my wife. So I said, yes. Sally says, is that for all of us? Yes, it is called, I'll put my email in the chat again. If you have questions, I'll put my cell phone, but I'm on the East coast. Um, and I have, 14, 12, and nine-year-olds. So if you text me after like 9 or 10 p.m. I won't Eastern time, I won't respond till the next day. Um, I know we've got like seven minutes left. Any other questions or anyone? Adrian, Sheila, do you need to do anything to like chime in, wrap up, all that good stuff? No, this was fantastic. I <laughs> this was one of the best workshops. I really enjoyed every minute of it. Does anyone else have anything left to ask? Yeah, if you got questions, we got seven minutes or we can wrap up early. I'll Stephanie, it's great to see you, by the way. I love your, I love everything about your empty nemesser. I wish I was an empty nemesser at 59. I've got a 15 year old. So unfair. Not complaining. Anyone else have any questions? You know, there's an app for that. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thank you for having me. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Most importantly, I hope you learned something. I hope you implement it. Um, I hope you go use those five principles to grow your business. They've transformed mine. They transform every client we share them with. And if you implement them, they'll transform yours too. And I can't wait to hear your success stories.
Thank you so much, Seth. Thank you to Truist, too. Everyone, just so you know, Seth will be receiving your email. So just so you know that he will have that, we also will send you the recording so that you yeah, have the recording. I, I needed your email to send you the recording. And again, I'm CEO of a marketing firm. I'm going to warn you. We're going to market to you. We're going to drip on you. And you can tell us, hey, you know, I'm good. No, thank you. Um, I'll take the free offer and that's it. And again, there's no sales pitch on that free offer. But we are going to invite you to other events. We're going to invite you to other things um, so that you can go further down the rabbit hole and grow your business as much as you want. So that one day, Mary, you can hire Mary to get you packaged for sale for a private equity firm for a zillion dollars. <laughs> uh, Seth, do you have any social media you want to share? Um, all of them. Um, <laughs> well, what's the handle? How do we find uh, Sure. Hang on a second. Give me. So I will. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, um, TikTok. Um, so here, I'll give you LinkedIn. Let me sign in and grab my LinkedIn link because I was signed in as clients earlier today. Hang on one second. Um, I had, because as CEO of a marketing firm, we've had a couple of marketing Facebook accounts shut down um, because Facebook is paranoid about what you can and can't say. So there's more than one Facebook profile with my name on it. Um, here's my LinkedIn. LinkedIn is linkedin.com slash Seth Green. Very tricky. Green has an E on the end. And I'll give you, I may have more than 5,000 Facebook friends, friends on my main profile, but hang on one second and I'll pull it up. Uh, if you Google Sharkpreneur anywhere, you'll find the podcast. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hang on two seconds. I'm waiting for Facebook to load. Yeah, no, part one mutual co connection. Ah, there is my Facebook profile. You will see when you go there. My wife had me change my picture to this app that made me look like a vampire for Halloween. So, yes, that's me. Or Chris Angel. You look a lot like Chris Angel. Thank you. I will. I will take that. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I hope you got a lot out of it. I can't wait to hear your success stories. And if you want a marketing makeover, shoot me an email or a text. Happy to set one up for you. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great rest of the day. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. And we'll see you in December again. Thank you.